Okay. Um, good one, one minute. Uh, one minute. I go live. Uh, good evening. Mark. One minute. Everybody. One minute. I first okay. time go live. Okay. Yes, go ahead. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to our session on uh, boosting uh, self-confidence among students in the classroom and beyond. It is a very important subject as we seek to instill resilience uh, among students. It is indeed a topical issue that affects uh, many uh, students around the, around the globe. Uh, containing uh, um, their studies um, and even their social interactions. So in this um, in this session, we seek to to unveil uh, the challenges that are faced by students and to also come up with um, with ways or measures uh, in which we may help uh, students to improve their confidence within the classroom so that they may give a meaningful, fruitful educational experience. So let's get started. I hope everyone is ready. So at this time, I want to welcome our um, our SIFC president to come uh, to introduce uh, ISCC uh, to those of us who are watching um uh, and what are we over to you to come uh -huh. okay it's uh issue is not here um the connection the connection so um who get uh, right away to business? Who we'll start with our first, uh, our first, uh, our first uh, speaker, um, Ambassador Manat from India? You can present. Thank you so much. Shall I start? Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening from land of diversity, India. Myself, Ambassador Manat Pankular Nidja from India. And an IIU Youth Ambassador India and IIU ISDC Public Relations Officer. It's an honor and privilege to be part of boosting self-confidence among students in the classroom and beyond. Let me start off with a beautiful quote by a Buddhist advocate for peace and freedom, the Dalai Lama. With realization of one's own potential and self-confidence is one's ability, one can build a better world. Is there any link between confidence and self-confidence? Do you think they're similar or they do not have any similarity. I define self-confidence as being secure in yourself and your ability. This is different from being confident, which shows on evidence of things you have been able to do or achieve in the past. Certainly, relying on confidence 
is an issue because what do you do when you have no evidence to draw upon? If you believe you can only do things you have accomplished before, how do you expect to create new results in your future? You have to rely on your self-confidence. When I'm self-confident, I know that I can trust myself to do what I have said I would do. I may have never recorded a podcast, but before when I took a step back, I saw there were many ways in which I could count on myself. Thus can say, self-confidence is an attitude about your skills and abilities. It means you accept and trust yourself and have a sense of control in your life. You know your strengths and weakness well and have a positive view of yourself. Do you know self-confidence is very useful and important to achieve goals and fulfill your wishes? We all know well that success comes to those who have a belief in their abilities. We cannot achieve goals in our life without self-confidence because a self-confident person is independent, eager, optimistic, loving and positive by nature. We need to build and improve our self-confidence as it can never be presumed. Many people have this habit of preaching the negative. Okay, let me share one small example with you all. If students are going to drawing competition and are nervous, but why? They should not overthink because they are chosen for this competition because they're good at drawing and they should not let their negative presumption shake their confidence. Self-confidence is the belief in oneself and own abilities. It is basically freedom from doubt. It is not something that can be taught. It is something that we develop internally by ourselves. The person who lacks self-confidence is totally opposite, isolated, inferior, depressed, confused, and sensitive to criticism and failure. It does not mean that a confident person always gets success in life. But they take life challenges positively. They learn from their mistake and keep trying to achieve better in life. Always believe in yourself and learn to say what you feel. Most people face this problem of not saying no to something they don't like. It is important to say no politely if you're not comfortable with something. Don't feel guilty about it. There's nothing wrong with it. Setting realistic goals is a good practice to boost self-confidence. We should not set our goals too high or too low. As both can affect your self-confidence bad. Too high make one, one underconfident and may not be able to achieve. And the too low goals can make one overconfident as one can achieve it easily. My sincere advice to everyone is to keep on learning to achieve self-confidence. Learn from your past experiences. It's a beautiful set. Rome was not built in a day. The same way self-confidence does not build in the one day. Believe in yourself and keep trying. Please understand, self-confidence drives you to your dreams of success. Although self-confidence does not guarantee success, but at least you have to try to pursue what you wish for and therefore there's no regret at the end of the all. Always remember, self-confidence is a super power. Once you start believing in yourself, magic starts happening. Thank you. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Ambassador Manat, for such a powerful speech on self-confidence. Indeed, to be self-confident is to be independent for, for one to realize their goals 
and to achieve whatever they want to achieve in life, they should believe in themselves. Like you say, that uh, self-confidence it is a superpower, and we believe uh, we have um, we touched on the uh, on self-confidence being uh, being an op optimistic person. So students they need to be optimistic in whatever they do. Thank you so much, uh, Ambassador Manat, for that presentation. They thank you so much. Uh, we'll move on to the next speaker. Uh, it's um, Ora Ara La. Yes, yes. Uh, actually, if Tika Ma'am is there, I would love to hear from her. Sorry. I think it's if Manat, Inga but... Uh, I'm asking if Inga Mam is there. Can I hear from her? I'm here. I think she has a clear kind of con uh, piece of um, connectivity issues. Okay. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, our next speaker shall be Ara Latisha. Ara Latisha, are you there? Um, seems like she's not with us. Um, I until we are going to have uh, the next speaker until he's going or she's going to be uh, ready. I don't I don't know if you can hear me because uh, I'm really sorry. I'm uh, having a bad connection today. I would like to thank uh, Manaka for her uh, amazing uh, presentation. Okay. Usually we she usually can uh, prepare a short speech, but I'm in love. Usually I mentioned that I'm in love with her way of the presentation and how uh, confident uh, she, uh, she is. Usually she's able to express herself in an amazing, uh, in amazing uh, way. So uh, on behalf of IAU, Takenda and me, we would like uh, to thank her for her amazing presentation. Actually, it's a great beginning to start with, uh, with her and also looking forward to hear from the other amazing participant. Thank you, Tatenda. Thank you, Dr. Ma, uh, for that. Um, um, uh, at this time, we'll call upon um, Aspen, Aspen, are you ready? Aspen. Mm. Okay, I see, I see, I see. Ora, that you shall be. If you are ready, you can, you can go on with your presentation. Latisha. Hello. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. First, I will say thank you so much to the IIU University for organizing this conference. I'm happy and grateful to be here with ICDC president, moderator, all the student speaker and guest speakers. Today's topic is very good because it is important for students to boost their self-confidence, especially in their learning process. Students who don't have the self-confidence often tend to be passive or aggressive. Even so, they can be less productive and efficient. The student will also have a hard time learning new things. They might also be more 
likely to do poorly in school. Students need to do boost in their school confidence. When students have a higher sense of self-worth, they feel more confident and they interact with others better. They are able to do well in school. With a low sense of self-worth, it is difficult for them to succeed. Students are often worried about their grades because they have to deal with a lot of pressure from parents and teachers. If it you do well on the exam, there is a chance for you to get less mark and you expect. Some students even get lower grades than their friends with the same amount of effort and time speed. This is easily affect your self-confidence and make you feel like you are not good enough, which will lead to anxiety and stress. It is important that students learn how to handle their emotion and boost their self-confidence. I have nine tips that can help. First, surround yourself with people who are supportive and productive. Positive surrounding yourself with both people who complain or criticize will only bring you mood down, while surrounding yourself with supportive people will lift you up and help you to feel better about yourself. Second, be confident in your skill. Third, be confident in your ability to learn new things. Fourth, don't try too hard to be perfect all the time. Fifth, don't compare yourself to other people. Six, don't worry if you fail once or twice. Seven, have faith in yourself that you will do better next time. Eight, know your strengths so that you can focus on the instant of your weakness. Nine, try yourself every day when you accomplish something good even if it's the small thing like eating an ice cream or doing one thing that make you happy before. I hope this tip can help students around the world to be more confident. Thank you. Thank you, Aurea. You were really amazing. Thank you, mom. Thank you. We are so happy just uh, hearing your uh, presentation. You are really amazing and a confident girl. And we love you so, so much. Thank you for being with us. And thank you for your amazing presentation. Goodbye. Good afternoon, everyone. Sorry for being late. Um, what a wonderful presentation from our, I believe. Thank you so much. That was informative. I like the confidence. Yeah, very informative. Thank you so much. Um, for our next speaker, um, I believe it's Hassan. You may take the floor. Hello, my name is Hassan. I am from Lebanon, from Marut Public School. I want to talk about self-confidence. That is very important and essential in my life and other life. Do you know what is self-confidence? Confidence? Of course no. Let, uh, so let's get started. Somebody said, Nothing is impossible. Life has got the old turn. Self-confidence is an attitude about yourself and the skills and the, uh, abilities. It means to accept and uh, accept and trust yourself to control your life, to know 
the weakness and the, and the strength in your personality. And, and to have positive views about yourself. So, how to increase your self-confidence? Number one, praise yourself. Number two, trade yourself with confidence. Three, achieve achievable goal. Four, think logically. Four, achieve a challenge. Six, recognize every old memorizes. Six, express your feelings. Seven, learn to say no. At the end, I am so happy for listening to me. Thank you, uh, thank you the bottom, uh, from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, Hassan. We are so happy also just you are uh, today with us. I'm so happy to. It was a great pleasure just to listen to your presentation. Hassan, you were amazing. Thanks a lot. So, what is Eric? Can we continue with the next uh, the next speaker? I think uh, just the problem with connection. Let me check the list. Yes, Tatinda. I think uh, Tatenda has a problem with his uh, connection, so we can continue until he's going to be uh, back with uh, our next speaker, Sara, are you ready to present now? Hi, Sara. Sara, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah, since the, the, the other speaker has just a problem with connection, we can uh, start with you. It's a great pleasure to hear from you, Sara. Go on. Yes. Hello, everyone. My name is Sara Hijazi. I'm from Lebanon. It's a pleasure to be with you today. Self-confidence is the key of success. All problems can be solved and all challenges are faced by our self-confidence. So we should be confident, overcome our fears and worries in order to open the vast gate of success, invention and discoveries. But what are the effects of less self-confidence in the classroom and beyond the classroom? Students may make some comments such as, I am stupid, I can't do this, I always do everything wrong. Students may react to adversity by giving up or turning off their cameras in any session. Also, they may be Reluctant to try new things. In addition to that, students may do very well for a period of time, then suddenly underperform. No self-esteem or lack of confidence leaves, leaves students doubting their ability to succeed, making them hostile to engage in learning or take appropriate academic growth. Whereas self-esteem is often built and butters throughout estimable acts and achievement, even small ones. 
What about beyond classroom confidence is a feeling of trust in one's abilities, qualities, and judgment. Without it, children will struggle to develop the skills they need to embarrass their full potential in out and end up to school children with self-confidence, feel good about themselves, and know they, they deserve respect from others, even their teacher, but they also can recognize their faults and uh, overcome mistakes. They have a negative image of themselves. They might, they might feel bad, ugly, find it hard to make and keep friendship and may feel victimized by others, feel lonely and isolated. Despite everything mentioned above, some ways to improve low, low self-esteem. Recognize what you are good at. We are all good at something, whether it's cooking, singing, doing a puzzles, or being a friend. Build positive relationships. Be kind to yourself. Learn to be assertive. Start saying no. Give yourself a challenge. I remain most grateful for the rap attention with which you sat throughout this presentation. I am confident that you, you have learned something from it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sara, for oh. your uh, short presentation. Actually, Sara highlighted something which is important. Uh, mm -hmm the importance of self-confidence for uh, students, especially when it comes to their academic performance, because uh, we as teachers, we are supposed to do our best in order to boost self-confidence and encourage our students to have a good image about uh, themselves. Students who are usually hesitant, who, who has actually a low self-image can be a productive student. So it's our duty, not just as a, as a teachers and as educator, not just to give information for, uh, for the students. We are supposed to work hardly in order to work on their personalities, to, to be able to express uh, themselves in a good way, to be confident about, uh, about themselves. This is going to help them to be more productive, more active, and more involved in the learning the process itself because happy uh, happy students or uh, students who are usually confident they can be uh, they can achieve a lot they are going to be motivated to learn more thank you uh, sara a lot i know it's your first presentation it's your first time to be uh, online with us we highly appreciate your uh, presentation and your presence uh, today and also we would like to thank your teacher uh, Ms. Batul for, for her efforts just to help you to be with us uh, today. Thank you, Sara, and thank you, Hassan, too, and thank you, Ms. Uh, Ms. Batul. Floor to Tatenda, so we can go to uh, with Tatenda in order to introduce the uh, the next speaker. Yes, Tatenda, back to you. Yeah. Thank you, Sara. What is that in there? Uh, until Tatenda is going to be ready because I feel that he lost uh, his connection again. Let us move to Dr. Uh, Dr. Coffee. How are you? It's a great pleasure and a great honor that you are here with us uh, today. Mm -hmm. Hi, doctor. Yes. Hi, uh, madam. Good yeah, afternoon. we are really, we are really happy and honored just that, that uh, you are going to be with us uh, today, and I strongly agree with uh, with your notes on the chat that what is special about this conference that our participant today are uh, the youngest students. That mean uh, is something very important with respect to us because it's very important to start. Uh, to start that, that with young, uh, with younger, uh, with younger generation, as Zainab mentioned, they are the future global leader. Giving them the chance early to express themselves, uh, this is going to uh, to make a uh, to make a change. So, floor is yours. We are just happy to hear from you. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for giving me the floor, uh, Manal Chihad. Uh, 
And my uh, name yes. actually is Maha. Sorry, I'm uh, just uh, joining because of bad connection from my sister laptop. Uh, so okay. I'm Maha. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. All right. Okay, good. <laughs> That's fine. Um, I'm, a, I'm very glad to be here today. I'm enjoying the session so far because of the this very young student uh, are so confident, so so mature in their mind despite their younger age and, and capable of speaking, uh, giving their idea, their opinion and not reading. Uh, most of them don't even read from any book. They, they have their presentation with them, they're sharing it. Uh, um, that is a, a lot, uh, it says a lot about, about their maturity and the way their parents and their teachers are doing. And I'm glad the, the program managed to, to, to get them, like the organizers managed to get in touch to identify these very talented and uh, very skillful uh, young uh, students and they, they, we, we have them today. Uh, it's so great and so nice. So um, I'm Dr. Kofi Abuchi, I'm a, a lecturer. Uh, at the University of Lomé. Uh, I'm also a um, translator, a certified translator and interpreter. I also uh, work as a, a social agent. I work with many associations. I work with IIO, uh, Global Education Network, and many others. So it's a pleasure for me today to be here and share my thoughts on self-confidence or how to boost self-confidence. Uh, I think the first thing about boosting your self-confidence is knowing who you are. That's very important. Every individual yeah. must, must seek to know who they are. And uh, when you know who you are, you are on the way. or uh, you, you already have one step ahead into, uh, into becoming self-confident. Um, this topic is vague. Yes, uh, knowing who you are is, is vague. There's a lot of things involved into that. But every individual must seek to, to the ways to know who they are exactly. The second element uh, into boosting your self-confidence is uh, it, it is close to the first one, which is very, very important also, is what we call um, uh, knowing that you are unique, your uniqueness. Um, I think one of the presenters has already talked about some students uh, who are afraid to, to show their face when they're they are in a conference, they're, they're, they're off their camera, whatever, even in the school room, some students who are afraid to raise their hands. Some of them sometimes, if they explain the reason why they're doing this, you are not fine and you agree with them. Why? Because uh, some of them have some disabilities or some of them are just incapable of some things. They, they may be the stammer or they have any physical uh, body issue or whatever and then, because of that, they are afraid to show up. Some of them just because their teeth is no, are, are not well arranged in their mouth, they are afraid to speak in the public. Why? Because they don't know that they are unique. You as an individual are unique. There's no other individual in this world like you. You are unique with your voice. No other individual has the same voice like you. You are unique in terms of your existence. No other individual will, live, will be exactly the same like you. Can't you imagine that among the 8 billion people we have on the earth, there's no other one like you. There's no other one with the same features, with the same body appearance like you. So come on, you are unique. Don't look down upon yourself because of your, your disability or because of your, your, your shortcomings, your incapacities. You are unique. And uh, uh, even when we say uh, twins, twin brothers, twin sisters, uh, there's always a way to distinguish between them. Why? Because every individual is unique and must see or must view themselves as such. And um, now the third element, the third thing that can help us to boost self-confidence is also reading. Reading for help us grow. And as you grow, you become more confident, you become more sure of yourself. So I encourage all of us, all young people and every individual in this world to, to give themselves more to reading, looking for information, uh, glancing from right and there. And as you acquire more knowledge, you become more mature, you become more connected with the, the world around you and uh, you, you grow, you boost your self-confidence. Uh, the fourth element uh, I think is also important 
to boost your self confidence is attending conferences and uh, other uh, events around you. Conferences help you to meet new people. You know that you are not alone in this world. You know that uh, there's a lot going on around you. You, you, you hear from other people. And, and by doing that, you also grow. You also develop uh, inside inwardly. And while attending conferences, you might end up having a chance to speak. Like these young people, young children who have been speaking today, as you do, you grow. Um, it's, it's one of the shortest way to grow uh, and to boost your self-confidence is having the chance to speak, to, to, to present your views in any conference, in any, any event, whether online or uh, uh, live or face to face. So it's very, very important. And another thing I usually encourage my student to do is while they are in class, they must raise their hand to talk. Many children are afraid to talk. Uh, many do not uh, have this courage to, 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 op to, to open up and share their views. Uh, why uh, I said it before, maybe it's because of their some disabilities, but if you want to boost your self-confidence, if you want to grow, you need to express your views when there is there's a need. And when you don't understand anything in class, be courageous enough, step up, ask your question. Even if people laugh at you, even if people uh, look down upon you because of your question or because of you speaking, you must continue. Me, I was born very shy. I'm sharing my experience. I was born very shy and I grew up in a very remote environment, very close to, to, to the farm, to the forest far away from the town, from other students. So I, I grew up as a very close, a very uh, fearful person. And I, uh, the, the, in this situation, the only thing that helped me, or one of the, the most important element in, in, my, in regaining my self-confidence was uh, uh, asking questions in class. I always ask questions. I want to, 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 to know, I want to know more. I want to, the teacher to explain more things to me. And uh, sometimes the teacher, when they ask for class presentations, I'm one of the volunteers. I want to share my view. I want to present in class, especially when I registered at the Department of English. My country is a French speaking country. Uh, so English is not our main language. But when I registered at the English department after my my A level, I, I learned to, to, to give more presentation in English. And those things helped me again to boost my self confidence and uh, to, to, to be where I am today. Uh, today, I, I can speak in different events and conferences, uh, whether academic, uh, uh, even yesterday, I had to present an article in an academic um, forum. Uh, and uh, earlier this week, I spoke in another educative program for university students. And I speak for IIU conference, uh, monthly conferences. Every month I, I speak at the IIU conferences. I also speak sometimes at the Global Education Network conferences and Afro-generative programs. So these, because I learned earlier to ask questions in class, uh, to present, to give class presentations when uh, the teacher asks for, or my teachers ask for volunteers. And all these help me to grow and to boost my self-confidence. So I really encourage our, our students, our younger ones to learn to develop this, and this will help them to do that. Uh, one more element, the fifth one, into boosting your self-confidence sometimes is when you wake up in the morning, you look up yourself in the mirror. You look up yourself in the mirror, you admire yourself and you, you, you affirm your, your existence that you are unique, that you are special, that there's no one other person like you. You are brave, you say all positive words about you. Close your ears from people who are saying negative words to, from, to you. And those moments when you are alone, you look up in the mirror, talk to yourself, say the opposite of all the negative things people are saying uh, about you or all the negative things sometimes your parents say about you. Say the positive ones and that will help you also to gain, uh, to regain your self-confidence and to be strong and, and, and to grow in, in life. This is, this, these are very, very element, very uh, special 
element and uh, if you apply these, definitely you will grow self-evident. So I, I will conclude by, by saying that um, all individuals, whether they are children or adults, all need to be self-confident. Self-confidence is not only about, about uh, conferences or programs, it's about all life issues. You, if you are not self-confident, you can assume your place in this universe. If you are not self-confident, you cannot really interact with other people. If you are not self-confident, you cannot educate your children very well. If you are not self-confident, you cannot assume your leadership role. All of us are leaders, but how can you assume your leadership role if you are not confident, if you don't know who you are, if you cannot step up and take action, take responsibility for even your, your, your own doings? So it's all, all, it's all about life. Even if you are work, you are an employee, and you'll be an employee for life, you can't really play your role if you are not self-confident. You'll be always making mistakes because you are afraid to make mistakes, because you don't know yourself. And all these mistakes will be following you and you will never be happy in life. So self-confidence even leads to the ultimate goal of happiness. For you to achieve true happiness, you need to learn to be self-confident. Uh, I think I will stop here. If there's any question or issue, I will uh, react to that. Thank you so much for giving me the floor. Uh, wishing blessing to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kofi. Actually, accept uh, our endless gratitude for this amazing uh, presentation and the practical advices that I wish our uh, our students or our participants today can really uh, can really follow in order to uh, to benefit from your own. Uh, from your own experience, uh, from your own experience. And as you mentioned, usually our success depends mainly upon what we think about ourselves and whether we believe in ourselves or no, because usually if we, if we believe, we achieve. And here as the International Entrepreneurship University, especially uh, International Students Development Council, the main aim of our uh, conferences and webinars, as you mentioned early, is to give a chance to give the floor for our, our young learners to express themselves. You don't have to worry or uh, just be hesitant if you are going to commit mistake or no, because we are here to learn. We are giving you the chance. We are giving you the floor to express yourself to share your points of view and to learn from uh, your own mistakes. Thank you. Uh, thank you a lot, doctor. If thank you too, madam. Thank you. Would like to ask Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Kafi any questions? Feel free to do that. Yes. Hey, you, yes I, I can't get your point very well. Uh, do you mean I should intervene? I can't hear you. Uh, uh, what, what were you asking me to do? I can't. I no, I'm get just. Uh, I'm just asking the participants if they would like to raise any question before we are going okay. to the uh, next speaker with Tatenda. Yes, Tatenda. All right. Yes, Tatenda. Okay. Okay. Uh, yes. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Ma. Um, I think things are. Uh, is Amit ready? Amit Rasko, I saw you. Are you ready? Yes, yes, I am ready, ready. You can go on. Thank you so much uh, for this wonderful session. How to raise your confidence or how to boost your confidence. Uh, good evening, good morning, good afternoon to all the participants, speaker, moderator from the whole globe. Today, we are going uh, to talk about how to boost your confidence. First, just imagine, uh, pick something in your hand and touch your hand uh, with the earth surface. Now, uh, we will uh, go to carry this uh, substance or anything that you pick in your uh, hand uh, towards up. So raise your hands and uh, move the substance from uh, the earth surface towards up. So just we move this substance from uh, low potential to high potential. Just like confidence is just something that uh, it's a potential. 
that anybody have some uh, some have a high potential with high potential of confidence some have low potential of confidence so the most important uh, that uh, i would like to share uh, is my experience so uh, confidence is in that behavior we can't diminish it but we can increase or decrease it some have low level of uh, confidence some have high level of confidence so what are the ways that we increase our confidence so there are five tips that i would like to share with you all how to raise your confidence first of all work with a growth mindset growth mindset mean that uh, for example if you attained your first speech uh, if you have a first speech then I, in upcoming speech how you will behave you should behave you should do in a different way and also uh, number second practice make amend perfect this is also that if you have a practice on that you will be a confident number third self care and also build positive relationship with other uh, for example if you are speaking to someone you should have a positive relation to them and also uh, if you want to be speak with confidence you uh, first of all uh, change your mindset then also some uh, people uh, uh, learn breathing techniques which is make you be a uh, too much confident and also if you are talking on a specific topic you should must research on that topic you should must research on that topic on which you speak know your message if you are delivering uh, your message uh, you should know about that and also understand your audience that what they want what they uh, what what uh, what their expression towards your uh, speech and also must get a uh, constructive feedback from your audience so uh, as i told uh, you all that confidence is an innate behavior of Uh, everybody we can't diminish it but we can decrease up to some level so these were some tips that i share with you all to uh, boost your confidence thank you so much if any uh, audience have thank some you. question go ahead and ask Thank you for me. It was a great pleasure to see your face because actually I was wondering at the beginning why you didn't talk in your camp. Due to network error, this yeah. is not. I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't worry, don't worry. Especially today because we are speaking about self confidence and just having uh, the ability to share our thoughts in public with others people. So thank you, uh, Hamid, for your wonderful. Uh, presentation we highly appreciate your presence with us today back to tatenda floor is yours let us continue thank you so much okay okay thank you so much thank you so much yes yeah. every student today must open their cameras <laughs> okay <laughs> um we'll move on to eric tube eric tube you can uh, go on Good afternoon once again everyone. Uh thank you for this time. Uh I just wanted to share a little something about self confidence. Well, as there is a quote which says that a journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. Confidence is not something which just to just come to you. You have to take the first step. You have to claim it. If it means that you wake up in the morning just as doc said before that you say no to negative comments then that self confidence you have given yourself the platform to decide how your day will come out that self confidence um mm -hmm. you should never let anyone detect what your day is that's a self confidence so being a self confident mm -hmm. person is having an 
a, what I like to call an active boundary. We have physical boundaries whereby we say this person or such people cannot come close to me. When it comes to self-confidence, you should have an active boundary whereby you know on your own to say, I can allow this to my circle. I cannot allow this. If you hear a negative comment, hey, maybe for instance, someone says you are not good at English. Well, you are learning. It's the first step. You have to take the step in order for you to understand and know how to speak English. It's the first step which means you have created a boundary to say, I will not allow negative comments. That's, um, that's how I define self-confidence, the ability to actually understand what you need and what you don't need. The ability to say, let me raise a hand and not wait for someone to raise their hand first. Because a good example would be a classroom scenario whereby maybe a teacher asks the question and you, you have the answer, but you are not confident enough you feel like someone has to speak before you. Or as someone as you are talking about self-confidence, you have to take that first step, even if your answer is incorrect. But the fact that you have taken the time to actually say, let me speak, that self-confidence. You should not actually say, no, I should go for, for lessons somewhere. No, you have to take a step on your own to say that today, this morning, I want to wake up. If I drink coffee, I drink coffee, but I tell myself that today I'm going to raise a hand in classroom. That would be a, a great example of boosting your self-confidence. You have to also create uh, positive relationships, a relationship where you have someone to encourage you, whereby I can say, my friend, wake up now, it's time to read. Then you wake up and tell yourself that I'm able to read. Then in the classroom, I'll raise a hand. You have taken a step to your self-confidence. You do not allow negative comments to detect, or you do not allow scenarios to detect how you come out your day but you being yourself having the ability to say let me raise a hand first let me go out first that self-confidence yeah i think mostly that's it um my my point of emphasis is that create an active boundary to allow what and what not to come and affect you mostly negative and positive uh, um, comments from other people which will actually deteriorate your confidence if you have an active boundary you can learn to say no to negative comments and yes to positive comments, which will actually boost your confidence. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Eric. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Um, we should have um, uh, set boundaries, boundaries that um, that protect our 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 self. Uh huh. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that. Um, if there are any questions uh, pertaining to self confidence, you may uh, throw your questions in the chat box. Meanwhile, I want to emphasize that um, self confidence is an internal process, it's a, it's a mental process that needs to be dealt with. So, um, as uh, Eric Dewe pointed out, that um, one of the ways we may um, boost self confidence as students is to surround yourself with uh, people that share the same vision, the same, the same dream with you. So you go to have people that encourage you, people that feed you um, good things, that feed you with the right mentality, that is the same energy, that is the same vibe as you are. So as a student, if you are to boost your self-confidence, you ought to surround yourself with people that elevate you, people that support you um, all the way. Because you will find that um, as, as a student, you will see that in the school setup, there's so many groups. And um, one, of the, one of the issues that uh, students uh, mostly face is bullying and bullying is in groups. So you might be in that group where you have been bullied and bullying uh, affects uh, self-confidence. So one of the ways to articulate that is to surround yourself with people that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that assist you or that uh, motivate you to be somebody. Um, on my second point, is that uh, you've got to have determination. The only way to make sure that you just uh, to make sure that uh, you've got a high self esteem is to have determination, to have a goal, 
something that you wake up for, something that you live up for. So regardless of the challenges uh, that a student might face, you got to be determined, you got to wait for it, you got to uh, to be yourself. Like I quote the doctor, coffee says, um, you can read books, right? It is a determination uh, goal. Um, by reading books, you will find um, ideas. You will boost your, 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 your mental, uh, mental strength, mental capacity. Like I said, self-confidence is always within the mind. Your mind is the one that uh, determines how you will interact with everyone uh, in the school place or and beyond. So you got to be determined. When um, um, pertaining to the classroom, a determined student is not curtailed by what um, other students um, may, may think uh, of he or she. So let's say, if, let's say you're going to have um, a, certain, uh, a certain subject, maybe at nine, the, 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 the only way you can uh, also boost your self-confidence is to read ahead, to go in the library and, um, and read books uh, prior before, before the lecture or before the, the lesson. That way you'll be able to speak uh, confidently. Uh, you'll be able to answer questions. Uh, you'll be able to also give answers. So it is also um, a way that we can um, uh, improve our, our self-confidence. Um, right. As a student, you've got to know your, your weaknesses. You've got to know your strengths and your weaknesses. So once you know your weaknesses, you can work on solutions that may uh, best address your weaknesses. And what if a, a student and that knows their, their weaknesses, uh, a clever student who look for, for someone who has that uh, sense. Okay, for example, Eric Dewey is good in math and I'm very bad at math. So what I would do, I'll go to Eric and try to, 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 to work out with them that he may assist me in, a, in, a, in being good in math. So it is also one of the ways we can um, I deal with uh, self-confidence. So it is indeed uh, a very crucial issue in the, in the school setup uh, that really needs to be emphasized. We've got to rise up as students. We've got to believe in ourselves that we are somebody, that we got our own strengths and weaknesses. Like I also quoted what uh, Ambassador Minor said, that you don't need have to be too high or too low. You just have to be you, be yourself, be original, like yourself. Uh, you know, if you don't like yourself or if you don't believe in yourself, nobody can do it for you. So the best way to rise uh, above those challenges, to work on yourself, to love yourself and be the best. Yes, yes. So, um, that's what I have for you today. A lot has been said by, the, by our speakers, uh, by our guest speakers, uh, student speakers. They have said a lot, but this is what I can only add to the uh, given to what has been shared so far. So this is time for, this is question and answer session. So if anyone has questions, it is time. No question. Okay, I see a hand. Uh, you can go ahead, Eric. Okay, um, maybe this would help someone. Um, what is the difference between <coughs> confidence and being overconfident? How do I know that now? I am overconfident instead of being confident which you want. How do I know that now I'm being overconfident? 
Ok. Eu tenho Covid. Questions there. Ok. Hello. Yeah. yeah. The, I had a question. <laughs> I, I think our friend would like to know how do I know that I'm overconfident, right? Yes, yes. What's the, you are saying that um, what is it? Self-confident in being overconfident. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. How Good. do I know um, that I'm now being overconfident? Overconfident, yes. Uh, being confident, as we, we have we have seen that all over this conference is uh, learning to grow and know who you are and uh, not being afraid to to take action to do what you have to do not being ashamed uh, when you are outside uh working uh being uh, free to interact with people around you and all this now uh, being overconfident comes when you you being confident you don't take advice from people like you, you're not ready to take any advice. You think you know everything. You think you don't need any person for, 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 for help or whatever. So any person who can take any advice from anybody, who can learn from people or who think they are on the top, that person is overconfident and is very bad for, for the person because no matter how, old you are, no matter how rich you are, no matter how confident, how, how powerful you are, you still need people's advice at time. Of course, you are not going to be. Those who are not confident at all, they just take any advice and they want to do whatever people say, which is bad. And an overconfident person want to run away from every advice, which is bad also. So as a, an, a confident, self-confident person, a mature person, when people give you pieces of advice, you listen to them, you judge to see how this can help you. You don't reject, but you judge. If this cannot help you, you decide to continue your way otherwise, but if it can help you, you learn from it. Or sometimes people say it this way, but when you look at it, you see that only way they are, they are right, but you are not going to do exactly like they say, because that one will not help you and you, you, you arrange or you, you revise your plans. So that is, uh, that is it. And another way, uh, somebody who is overconfident is somebody also who does not give the chance to people. Like if you're a leader, you don't give chance to people you are leading to view their opinion, to, to object to your plans and your decisions. You think you are the only smart person in the room. You are the manager of the company, for example. Your employees, mm -hmm. uh, when you are in a meeting, they are not allowed to talk because you think your plans are perfect. They are not allowed to, to, to voice their, their objections, which is not good at all. And somebody who is so overconfident at home, for example, does not give chance to his, their children to express even their feelings. Your, your decisions are God-given. God your decisions must not be uh, questioned at all. Those who are overconfident, they don't interact well with their partner. If you are in love or if you are married, you don't really interact with your, their, your partner very well because you think you are, you are on top of them. They are, they are, they are not uh, as wise and as smart as you. So those are some of the issues that some of the elements that show that you are overconfident. And if you get to that level, please learn to, to calm down and take lessons from other people because life is not only about you and uh, you might live early if you are overconfident. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Kofi. Uh, that's a uh, answering the question for us. So as students, um, you must learn to take uh, advice from our teachers, from my elders, um, we must need uh, their instructions, we must need their advice so that we do not have access later on in life. So as a student, you go to submit or you go to, uh, uh, to be someone 
that listens uh, to other students and even uh, even teachers um, concerning that will be young. Okay, uh, anyone with a question? Question and answer station. Anyone? Ezra? Ezra? Any question? Ezra is silent today. We didn't hear from her. Hello, Ezra. Uh, okay. okay. I think like there are no more questions. Um, uh, before we close the session, uh, Dr. Mark, just something to say, ma'am. Before we close the session, Dr. Mark, do you have something to say to us? Am I audible? Am I audible? Yeah, yeah, definitely. We can hear you. I, I can okay, hear okay. you. Oh, I think. Okay, okay. Okay. Um, all one of you who come to an end there uh, would like to thank uh, all the speakers, all the students who shared uh, their valuable knowledge on um, boosting self confidence. We'd like also to uh, thank our founder, Mr. Uh, for giving us this platform uh, with our souls, we can uh, sharpen our souls as students um, to better uh, improve our academic places for our academic uh, goals. And we'd also like to take the leadership, our president, Dr. Tamara, which is our ISCC president. We make sure we support us uh, um, in making sure that um, we as students become the best of ourselves at the end of the day. Thank you so much for your leadership, ma'am. Thank you for your leadership, Mr. Pundit. Um, I'd like to thank our guest speaker, uh, Dr. Tokyo PC. Ah, we really learn the best from you. Thank you so much for this uh, valuable information that you gave us. I believe we will give the boost our self confidence. And we also like to thank the Patricia Ambassador in Absentia as a great way to make it to the terrible things from that we are experiencing at the moment. But I'm sure they are ready for this. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Eric, for wonderful moderation. Thank you, uh, dear speakers. Bye for now. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you all for your participation. Thank you. 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 Thank you.